Hey there, this is Miriam Shulman, and you're listening to episode number 70 of the Inspiration Plays podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by the Better Than Santa sale. If your goal in 2020 is to make more time for your creativity, but you need a little help learning a new technique and you want to give yourself a gift of inspiration, I have great news for you because my most popular art classes are all available for registration right now for a few more days until January 2nd. Go to shulmanart.com forward slash Santa. And this episode is also sponsored by the Artist Incubator because I know there's plenty of artists who don't need my help with the techniques, but they really want to learn how to sell and market their art. And if that sounds like you, I invite you to apply for a free strategy call. I do have a few spots left in my Artist Incubator program, and there are a number of ways besides that program that you can work with me. Go to shulmanart.com forward slash B-I-Z. Tell me a little bit about yourself. That way we can schedule a time to talk. Once again, shulmanart.com forward slash B-I-Z, and you can schedule a free strategy call. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world inside a podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hello, this is your host, artist Miriam Shulman, and you're listening to episode number six. 70 of the Inspiration Place podcast. I am so thrilled that you're here. I have recorded 52 episodes this year. That's because I didn't skip a single week. And that's commitment. Believe me, I am so proud of myself. That was one of my goals for 2019. Produce a podcast every single week and not skipping a single one might be able to hear that I still have my cold. And for those of you who are wondering, wow, she's been sick a long time. I actually recorded last week's episode on Friday. And this is the same weekend that I'm sick. So it's just it's actually just two days later. But yeah, I'm still a little bit sick. I know I'll live. That's why I sound a little more nasally than usual. And that is commitment. I know that I there's no reason why I couldn't show up here and record this podcast for you. Today is extra special fun. What we did for today's episode is we are pulling together basically a best of. So it's New Year's Eve. If you're listening to this while it's live and if you're not, maybe we're still in the brand new year. What I did was pull clips from most of my episodes. I skipped a few, not because I didn't like them, but just if they didn't quite fit into my narrative. So here's what you're going to discover during today's show. You're going to learn the best tips from my guest experts on creating and sticking with creative habits. Isn't that something just what you needed to hear right now? We're also going to be talking about why building your confidence is the number one skill you need, whether your goal is to create art that is unique and original, and also why confidence is necessary if you want to be profitable. <laughs> And of course, we'll be sharing some of the juiciest art marketing strategies. I'm starting with the top, what I published last year on New Year's Day, January 1st, 2019. I had my friend Greg Clunas on with his book, Tiny Leaps, Big Changes. As humans, we have our set of things that we love and we want to do more of them, whether that is art or fitness or spending more time with our loved ones, whatever it might be, we want to do more of them and we have this deep desire for it. It drives us crazy when we can't figure out why is it we're not doing that. Now, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is creating a daily habit of creating art. Here is how Jennifer Orkin Lewis, my guest from episode number 27, did it. I told myself when I started that if I really can't do it, I don't feel well, I don't have time, you know, all the excuses, that I would start by just making a mark on the page. And just by getting the paint out and making that mark, 
most of the time you can build that out and do more because you started, you're up there, you're standing there, it's in front of you. Now, if you're not sure what to draw, my guest Danny Gregory had this advice. I believe in drawing from life and I believe in drawing your life. By doing that, you also have inspiration on what to draw, which is a big question that people at all stages in the drawing career wonder about, which is, do I just set up a bowl of fruit or do I have to, you know, go and draw naked people in a basement somewhere? What do I do to actually draw? And my answer is draw your shoes, draw your breakfast, draw your dog, draw your laundry, draw your whatever. Creating a daily practice was also something I discussed with author Austin Cleon. He is the author of Steal Like an Artist and also his 2019 book, Keep Going. No matter what level you're at with your work, whether you're just starting out or whether you just won an Oscar or a Pulitzer or whatever, the question always remains, and that is, what next? What are you going to do next? I think the people who get that figured out the best are the artists and creative people who have some sort of daily practice. They basically don't worry about what happened yesterday. They don't worry about what's happening tomorrow. They're worried about the day and what they can do with it. And so whether they're facing success or failure, they sit down every day and they do their work. And artist Lisa Congdon agrees. Show up, do the work, feel the fear, and do it anyway. Eventually you'll get there. Showing up and practicing is actually the key to finding your, you know, or uncovering your voice, right? But since creating a daily practice is a challenge, Tracy Matthews offers this advice about creating a schedule. If you want to be a creative force of nature and really be like making a lot more money and building a business and getting more of your art out there, you have to have structure in your week and in every single day of the week. Now, as you create work daily, it is important to keep sharing it. That means keep being vulnerable. But that does not mean that you're looking for approval for your art on social media. Here's what Melissa Dinwiddie shared in episode number 39. These social media tools, it is beholden on us to use them extremely carefully, sensitively, and mindfully. And I spend very little time on Instagram and Facebook and social media in general, but I do still have a practice of sharing. Putting my work out there, there's such a difference between putting it out there. Do you like it? Do you like it? Do you like it? Do you like it? Are you going to approve of me? Is this okay? Am I okay? That is a really different energy than here's a thing. Boom. Let it go. I made a thing. Here it is. Boom. Let it go. Coach Allison Stanfield is all about knocking down your excuses. As a person who should be the CEO of his or her art business, you have to be in control of your schedule or someone else is going to control it for you. When I see artists talking about being so busy and blaming, you know, this person for impeding their time and this and that, it's usually because they haven't set those boundaries around their time. But the truth is, it's never the perfect time. When I interviewed Lacey Boggs, there was a painting on the back wall behind her by her late father. Her father had waited his whole life to paint when he was retired. It's such a heartbreaking story, and I just want you to hear it again. When he got sick, he had just retired. He had retired and got sick about six months later. He had leukemia, and he was so mad because he had waited his whole life to have time to do his art and play his guitars and go fishing and do all the things he wanted to do. He died two years later, so he never got to do all the things he had been waiting to do. So I really took away from that that you cannot wait, right? You cannot wait. You have to live for now and do the things that light you up now. This theme of not waiting is so important that I did a full episode on it. Actually, probably more than one. But one episode I did was how I left corporate finance and the impact of 9-11, why that made it perfectly clear that I could not wait any longer. If you've been waiting for the right time to start a new creative career or to even start making time for your creativity, please don't wait. It will never be the perfect time. I don't know one person who began their creative journey or a creative career who did not wish they started it sooner. 
But as Denise Jacobs shared both in her book and during our interview, it could be your inner critic making up excuses for you and telling you why your art is not worth your time. Here is a little clip from episode number 26. It is a protective mechanism. Your inner critic is trying to, it's a little misplaced, but it is trying to keep you from experiencing hurt over again. It's just a little too good at what it does. Like I said, it is misplaced effort and energy. No matter what you do when you paint or you create, or if you're a photographer, or, or maybe you work in another medium, your art is going to show what you really feel. That's why Susan Greif uses art as therapy in her practice. How they draw is another way to see. Are they anxious? Are they nervous? Are they comfortable? What expressions are they having? Then there's the drawing themselves. Is somebody missing in their drawing? Is somebody central in their drawing? Are they showing marks of anxiety? Are they showing marks of despair? That's because the way you do art is the way you do everything which was the theme for episode number 62. Bringing your life and your own heartache into your art will make you a better artist as well. It's kind of the same advice that writers hear that you need to write what you know. When you're bringing a person or a place or an animal that you feel strongly about into your work, it will show. In episode number 63, Art is Your Legacy, I shared with you why I think art is such a great connector of people because it allows us to share our truest and most vulnerable selves. But unlike politics, art is something that pulls people together. It does not matter where you live. It does not matter how you vote. It doesn't matter how you worship. Art brings all of these people together. And that's what I love about art. And that's what I love about being able to share that. And that's what I love about being an art teacher. I was thinking specifically why art is such a strong connector. And I wanted to pull out some of my favorite Brene Brown books to help me out, like find like kind of a quote to sum it up. One book that I read recently that I absolutely adore Braving the Wilderness. In that book, she shares that true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. And this, by the way, that's the end of the quote. (laughs) And this is what artists do. We are presenting our authentic selves our imperfect art to the world. That's why I always tell my students, your art does not have to be perfect. In fact, it's better when it isn't. Artists who share their work, whether it's their work in progress in my Facebook groups or artists who are doing this at a higher level, it doesn't matter. Their imperfections are what make the art great. And that's why strong connections and friendships blossom so strongly out of these art experiences and art communities. I know it's not easy to share your struggles, your scars, and your pain, but here's another reason why. Listen to what Anna Sui shared in our episode when we talked about our shadow selves. But you like someone so much better when you hear their struggle. They're human too. They're just like me. My struggle is, it's like everyone else's. And so it's, I love that you share that. It's a great, great point. And also, you know, speaking to your story, when you've lived through the struggle and you've been able to find strength in it, you don't have to repeat it, right? You don't have to pass it on. It's just like this almost like medal of honor you have. You're like, okay, cool. I got this. I got to this level because of my struggle. It's a really powerful thing. In episode number 32 about focusing while facing your fears, Rati Gorfin shared her view on using radical self-acceptance as a catalyst. All my life experience leading up to this moment makes me exactly who I need to be to work, to be an actor, to be in the business. It's radical self-acceptance. I think artists need to learn to practice that. As soon as you think you should be like somebody else, you're sunk. And even Money Mindset mentor Denise Duffield Thomas shared that it all comes down to believing in yourself. 
it is a series of being consistent, being true to your vision, and just believing in yourself is the most important thing before anyone else believes in you, before anyone else pays you yeah. for your art. You have to show up. Now, the reason it can be so hard to be authentic and vulnerable is because it requires confidence. That's why I talk about it in episode number 64, Dreams Not Regrets. Confidence is our natural state. What happens as we get older is we create limitations. We create limiting beliefs about what we can and cannot do. If we don't have any limiting thinking in our minds, our natural state is confidence and abundance and possibility. If we aren't limiting ourselves, if we weren't thinking thoughts of limitation, then the world is truly ours. Now, looking back over the year, I realized I talked a lot about confidence, even when I thought the topic was about something else. For example, in episode number 65, which is all about the art and science of pricing. Another piece of advice that I found really helpful for myself and also the clients I coach is that you should expect to hear no at least 50% of the time. And if you aren't hearing no that often, then your prices probably aren't high enough. To truly raise your prices, you need to raise your confidence. My spiritual listeners out there will call this raising your vibration. And there really is a lot of truth to that because a lot of pricing isn't about whether your art is worth it. It's whether you consider yourself to be worth those higher prices. That's why I asked Patty Lennon, the host of the Wealth and Purpose podcast, and also my guest on episode number 60, why she thought so many artists either underpriced their art or give it away. Here's what she said. It's subjective based on someone else's deeming it financially worthy. But first, the person that produced it had to open it out to the world to be judged. And most of us don't want to do that because the minute you sell something, you open yourself up to someone not buying it. When you give it away for free, you guarantee that you can hand it off without having to face whether someone else would deem it acceptable. Since we talk a lot about confidence, we also have to talk about the lack of confidence or really what the cause of this lack of confidence is. And usually that comes down to our doubts and fears, which is why I loved this episode that I did with Robin Joy Myers, episode number 29, Creative Living Beyond Fear. I used to think living fearlessly, that we used to use that term, live fearlessly. And I even thought the same way until I really got into the science and genetics of fear. It's not getting rid of fear. It's just using it to your advantage to serve you. Or doing things... Anyway, even though you're afraid. Definitely. It's kind of like a wake up call to be in that moment and to choose if it's a good fear to kind of excite you as to why you're feeling it and get you very in tune to yourself as to why you're feeling that fear and to move through it. Even when we did an episode on selling your art at art shows, Tracy Lizotte also brought up that emotion about fear that by the way, that was a great episode. Episode number 30. You need to get talking to your customers and don't have a fear of it because some people fear doing shows because they're fear of rejection. That doesn't Mm -hmm. happen. If someone doesn't like your work, they'll just walk by. They simply just walk by. The people that come into the booth are genuine interested in knowing more about you and your art. And it's usually 99% always a very pleasant conversation and you learn so much from it. Now, if you're wondering how the heck to create confidence and raise your vibration, One way to fix it is start with your environment, which is why I had on artist and feng shui expert Kate McKinnon. Not the same Kate from Saturday Night Live, by the way. Create that good positive energy and flow, which supports you in your well-being. I always say health is the most important thing. Without health, we have nothing. And so it's about creating a a beautiful environment. It's also about creating a healthy environment, reducing stress, and really supporting you and what it is you really want to do in your life. I talk so much about emotions on this podcast that I had on Rebecca Bastian, not just once, but actually twice on the show. 
Last year, we talked about imposter syndrome. And this year, I invited her back to do a fresh episode on perfectionism and how it impacts your mental health. We're finding that this is something that is deeply connected, not just to not making the art and people not completing things, but perfectionism is impacting people's well-being, physical and mental health. There isn't avoiding risk unless you live in a cave, have nobody you care about, don't need or want anything. As somebody with a lobotomy. <laughs> Just, you know, I mean, if you love and you care about someone or some things in your life, you're vulnerable and you're at risk of being hurt. Yeah. That is the human condition. And on the other side of that is a whole heck of a lot of joy. We have generations now where we have tried to engineer out failure and struggle and really shamed it and wanted everything to be shiny, happy, perfect, numb. We are creating generations of people that have lost the art of struggle. It is disconcerting. And I think there's a big movement pushing back on that right now, thankfully. And then I did another episode, episode number 35, build your creative confidence with these seven strategies. If you feel that sense coming on that you're a fraud or that you're not good enough, take comfort, first of all, that you're not alone. And then work on reframing your mindset. After all, just because you think it doesn't make it true. Sometimes these thoughts are just stories that we make up in our mind. They're not facts. They're thoughts. And thoughts lead to feelings. And negative thoughts lead to negative thinking. Oh, by the way, I actually had a freebie to help out with your confidence. So in case you missed it, here's how you can get it. Since my guests and I are all about encouraging your creativity and creative confidence, I put together a PDF called 10 Creativity Challenges for an Inspirational Day. To get your hands on it, all you have to do is go to shulmanart.com forward slash 36. Now, My belief is that we do have a modicum of control over our own emotions. That's what I talk about in episode number 58, overcoming overwhelm. Think of feelings like clothes in your closet. You get to choose to think and feel whatever you want. You are the only one who thinks in your mind. Feelings are just a vibration in our bodies. And we actually can control our feelings with our thoughts. Now, of course, I didn't only talk about emotions on this podcast because to truly gain momentum as an artist, you do need to take inspired action. And I truly want this podcast to be as actionable for you as possible. That's why in episode number 66, the passion to profit framework, I laid out my entire plan for profiting from your passion. While there's a widespread belief that artists don't make money, that's actually not true. Now, you'd be surprised at how many people truly make a living as a full-time artist. Not only is it possible, but it's actually common and much easier than you might imagine to make a consistent income from your art. While there are some artists who struggle and never really do gain momentum to sell their paintings consistently, there are others who are generating consistent five and even six figure incomes from their work. And heck, if you include superstars like Ashley Longshore or Damien Hirst, they're seven figure artists. So what makes the difference? The truth is they're following a specific process. Now, if you're wondering how to skyrocket your success as a professional artist step by step, and you're dreaming of doing that in 2020, and you're ready to start investing in your art career, and you're ready to let go of your limiting self-beliefs, you're in the right place. I've done it, and I can show you how to do it too using the specific process that I've developed. And in episode number 53, it was about why portraits were and continue to be a cornerstone of my success. Art collectors are willing to pay 
huge sums for a portrait that tells a longer lasting story. Portraits are about legacy. It's about life after death rather than the instant culture that we live in now. If you want to profit from your passion, portraits are really the fastest way to get there. Now, few of us will become presidents and first ladies, but that doesn't mean life's most precious moments shouldn't be commemorated with the same amount of reverence. Despite its deep-rooted traditions, fine art portraiture is still fresh and relevant. There's absolutely magic in a portrait that will continue to captivate viewers for as long as humans want to preserve their likenesses. And then in episode number 48, Metamorphous from Stay-at-Home Mom to Thriving Artist, I shared my experience of selling Pilates packages and how that taught me to sell art. This is what changed everything. This is when I had my aha moment. (laughs) It was kind of like when Luke Skywalker figured out how to use the force or when Harry Potter discovered he was a wizard. That was when I figured out that these techniques that they were teaching us to close sales on personal training packages and extra Pilates classes, these techniques could be used to sell my art. But here's the thing. It's really hard to do all of this on your own without a support structure, meaning a guide, a coach, or a group that lifts you up and supports you and helps you build your confidence and gives you strategies. That's why I invest in coaching and I encourage you to do the same, whether it's with me or somebody else. Now, here is what peak performance coach Todd Herman had to say. The biggest mistake that I made early on in life was I had that ego where I wanted to climb to the top of the mountain on my own and plant that flag up there and say, you know, I did it and I did it all on my own. I didn't get any help to get up here. That's one of the stupidest and slowest ways you could ever reach success. Anyone that I've ever met that has achieved really great things, they've done it on the power of being around other really great people. And then in episode number 68, artist agent Lilla Rogers joined me to talk about making art that sells. And she assured us that there is plenty of work out there for creatives. It's never been a better time for creatives. Here's why. Things, artificial intelligence, AI, they can do so much. Mm. When my mother had a business, she had so many people she had a What her advertising people did now can be done so quickly in InDesign, for example. And then so much can be offshored to other people, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but that's what happens. And what does that leave? It leaves creatives because artificial intelligence can, or robots can never do what creatives do. They cannot write books and music and make pictures. And look what's happening again in Netflix and all that in the content creation industries, it's crazy. It's a great time. So I want to reassure everybody that there's plenty, plenty, plenty of work out there, but your work has to be really strong. And unique, right? Like a new voice? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to copy someone because you'll never, you'll always be inferior to the copy. You want to be your own voice. And that necessarily is unique. When you are your own, you follow your passions and your obsessions, you will create your own unique style and just really work your ass off to get really, really good. Now, if you're interested in illustration jobs or getting your art on products, you're going to start to wonder about all the legal stuff that's involved. That's why I invited lawyer and negotiations coach Katie Lane to come on to chat with me on the podcast. It's really ironic because a short time after I recorded that episode, I actually caught a vendor using one of my images illegally on their products. I was able to use every bit of her advice to get him to pay up. But here is what Katie has to say about working with people who have crossed you. They're not very transparent. They're not very communicative, right? Like they didn't take the time to just send you a line and say, I would like to use this. What are your licensing terms? So maybe they're not the the best 
person to do business with. Now, a lot of times when I coach artists, they get intimidated by all the technology that's involved. To that, I usually tell them to find a teenager you can pay 10 to $15 an hour. There's no reason you have to do everything by yourself. They're really easy to train and definitely worth the investment. Or as my friend Nate shared on episode number 23. It's really easy to get intimidated. It's really easy to get worn down by this stuff. Don't let that get to you. Keep at it for the right people. But, you know, do your research, feel comfortable, be open to learning the the stuff because it it can be intimidating, but it's doable. And artists are one of the best audiences for that because they're really technical. They work with all kinds of different unique tools and things. But please don't try to do everything yourself. That is the fastest way to burn out. Listen to what my guest Katya Varbanova had to say. Try to outsource your weaknesses and don't try to force yourself to do them because they will burn you out. I have this saying, this is a quotable. Burnout has nothing to do with how much time you spend on something. Mm. Burnout has everything to do with what you spend your time on. So though I do believe all artists should have their own website and email list, there are many ways to get your message out. You don't have to have your own podcast. It's certainly a project I wouldn't recommend most people take on. My friend Nicole Holland is a specialist in getting you booked on other people's podcasts. On episode number 21, we talked about how to be a great guest. Listen to what she has to say about using podcasts to help define and get more exposure for your art. Podcast guesting specifically gives us the opportunity to connect with tens, hundreds, thousands, possibly millions of people all around the world from the comfort of our own home. Oftentimes, people aren't even going to see you, but they're going to hear your message. Trisha Brooke joined me on the podcast to talk more about the different ways artists need to develop their public speaking and why. Here's her advice from that episode. When we are speaking about what we're passionate about, we must understand what the objective is and how we're going to go after it. And that gives you a technique to be able to talk about your work always in a captivating way. Another way to get your message out is through emails, probably the easiest and most effective. But because artists are always stuck on what to write, either in their emails or on social media, I asked Kimberly Houston that question. And here's what she had to say in episode number 24. You can write about your process. You can write about your inspiration. There's so many things as an artist you could write about that's going to be interesting to collectors. Pretend like you're, you're talking to your best friend about your week last week. You know, you spent some time in the studio and you saw this thing and it made you want to do this this other, you know, just whatever you would be talking about, about your, your influences or your, again, your process. People love to see artists process. I was also fortunate to have another copywriter, Lacey Boggs, join me on the show. You heard from her earlier, but here's what she had to say about writing emails. All things being equal, we buy from people we know, like, and trust. And all things being unequal, we buy from people we know, like, and trust. So the more you can share your personality, the more your audience will learn to like you and trust you. And your art becomes that much more significant to them when they feel like they're kind of friends with you and they have a window into your personality. Whether you're writing or speaking about your art, that might be frustrating to artists who just want to make things. I do hear you. But there is an additional upside to articulating what your art is all about. That's why Gigi Rosenberg, my guest for episode number 52, shared this with us. Sometimes people feel frustrated and maybe even a little bit annoyed that they have to write about or describe their art. But what I find is the process of doing it sort of forcing yourself to articulate what you make and why you make it can actually help you make better art. Now, if you're wondering if any of this all works, it absolutely does. In episode number 37, I shared the romance of selling art. Here's just a short clip about that philosophy. I prefer to think of taking my art collectors through a courtship rather than a sales funnel. Sounds a little more personal, don't you think? 
Specifically, I take a potential art collector through the experience of meeting my art and I flirt with them until they fall madly in love and propose to collect or commission a piece of artwork. At the beginning, my art might first be introduced to a potential collector in a bunch of different ways. This could be someone I know or a stranger I have just met at an art show. They meet me and ask me about my art, or they've seen my art posted somewhere online, like on Instagram or Facebook. Just like meeting your true love on a blind date or in a singles bar, don't expect a marriage proposal over cocktails. Even if it is love at first sight, it is unlikely that your date will ask for your hand in marriage the first time they meet you, which also means it is unlikely you're going to sell a high-end artwork at that first meeting as well. You will need to stay in touch and date your potential art collector for quite some time. Therefore, you will need to stay in front of your art collector. Oh my gosh, what a year it's been. And I even left out a few episodes just for the sake of flow and clarity. So there is an episode that I really enjoyed with Eric Mizell about anxiety. There is an episode that I shared about closing art sales, doing it live in an art show at the park. And even the episode with my wonderful husband, Ron Schulman, I left that out, not because I don't love him. If you want to go back and listen to all of them, either for the first time or you just want to listen again, on the blog today, which you'll find using link shulmanart.com forward slash 70. By the way, Shulman is spelled S-C-H for those of you who are new to me. There is a complete directory of all the episodes for the year. And this is my gift for you. Now, if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, I'd love for you to share a review over on Apple Podcasts. It truly helps others find the show, and I'd love to hear what you think. To do that, go to shulmanart.com forward slash iTunes, scroll down, click write a review, hit the five stars, leave a comment, and most importantly, don't forget to hit send. Some people are just about getting you inspired at this time of year. I'm about keeping you inspired all year round. And I can't wait to share this journey with you for 2020. Happy New Year, everybody. And here's to making 2020 our best one ever. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration Place podcast. Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course on shulmanart.com. As of this recording, I still have a few spots left in the Artist Incubator program. So if your dream for 2020 is to take a great leap in your art career or really start building up an art business, then I invite you to apply. Go to shulmanart.com forward slash B-I-Z. Fill out the application. If you qualify, you'll get a free strategy call with me and I'll help you map out your plans for 2020. Hope to talk to you soon and have a beautiful holiday.